check my test. Okay. Let me continue my explanation. You were interrupted by so many things. So class, I was explaining about Sabah. And I was saying, because this is fundamental bit number 20, Jesus went to pluck corn in the field. That means it's not wrong to eat on the Sabbath. And he said it is lawful for him to do good on the Sabbath. Jesus also healed on the Sabbath. Jesus went to church. It was his custom to go to the Sabbath, how to go to the church on the Sabbath. And they were walking from somewhere to somewhere on the Sabbath. In the last days, the Sabbath will be a sign between me and you, between God and his people. So if you want to know who is God's people, they are keeping the Sabbath. That is according to Ezekiel 20.12 and then also Ezekiel 20.20. 20. The Sabbath is a sign between people and God. There is mark of the beast, there is also a sign from God. A sign that people are following God, that, which is the Sabbath. According to Ezekiel 20.12 and Ezekiel 20.20. 20. Yeah. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 5, 12 to 15 also repeats the commandment, Sabbath commandment, Hebrews, and other things. Okay. Sabbath starts at sunset and ends at sunset. Stewardship. <clears throat> God owns the universe, but God lends many things to us, and so that we will not be selfish, there is a uh, tithe. We are to give back 10% of our uh, gain. That is God's money. And God doesn't need money, but we need to be unselfish. Anyway, the nice thing class is <clears throat> if we don't return tithe, it is like robbing God. You know, rob, robbing is like hold up. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you pick up my cell phone without me, without my permission, it's called stealing. But if you take it while I'm looking, it's called robbing. <clears throat> So rubbing is, not giving tithe is rubbing. On the other hand, it says here, you bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. This is food. And prove me now I will not, if I will not open the windows of heaven. So if tithe opens windows of heaven, then tithe is advantage for us, right? <coughs> If we keep our money, we can, we only have uh, ten that ten percent. But if we return it, God opens windows of blessing, right? So if you delay the tithe, then you delay also the windows to open. <clears throat> if you give tithe uh, in due season, in correct time, the windows of, of, will also open. And I and just my opinion. Maybe if you give tithe earlier, the windows will open early also. <clears throat> what else? Uh, so the tithe is used for the church, for evangelism. In the Adventist church, the tithe is used for evangelism. It's not for building uh, the church building. Not for... Uh, team building also and so it is uh, good type 
Christian behavior <coughs> are amusement this is for IT people are amusement and entertainment should meet the highest standard of Christian taste and beauty. Where is that in the Bible? It is in Philippians 4 8. It says whatsoever is true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report. Think of these things. Because whatever you look at, it will affect you. You know, if you watch bad movie, the bad movie will influence your brain. It's like training an AI with bad things. If you watch good things and you listen to good people, productive people, not just idle uh, making entertainment, <clears throat> you will learn also good things. And our dress should be simple, modest, and neat. That's why there is a policy in some schools that you should take bath <laughs> after PE. <laughs> after PE, though, you should. Uh, there is a policy to shower. It also means that because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, we are to care for them intelligently. We should not, we are not going to eat uh, pork and fat and blood and unclean animals, birds and fish, according to Leviticus 11. <clears throat> but Leviticus 11 also says that clean things can become unclean. That's why when the clean things become unclean, we also not eat them anymore. Furthermore, alcoholic beverages, tobacco, and irresponsible use of drugs, <coughs> they're not in the Bible, but <coughs> statistics says that they are not good for health. What else? Also our thoughts. Okay, marriage and the family. Uh, Jesus said that the person who divorces commits adultery, except for fornication. Fornication is sex outside marriage. What else? <clears throat> adultery. So, husband, love your wife, according to Ephesians 5. And wife, uh, submit to your husband. And children, obey your parents in the Lord. Jesus was, number 24, Jesus was, uh, is our high priest. This is the best, in my opinion, the best fundamental belief. Aside from number one. Because you can see in Bible prophecy where the Seventh-day Adventist Church is. <clears throat> and then there will be a second coming because uh, this is only Satan's uh, idea about him, about uh, questioning God. And for 6,000 years, God will allow him to experiment after that, those who will repent, they will be resurrected. But the experiment is going bad. Everybody is dying, right? Because of sin, everyone's dying. Anyway, God will give us a chance, another chance, and the chance is now. If we believe, then God will return us to become immortal again. The second coming time is secret, but it, it is coming near. Okay, death, we have a hardware, you know what, we are like a computer, but the computer, we don't know how to turn it on. Nobody knows how to turn on the computer, only God. 
That's why we keep, we don't turn it off. <coughs> Death is when the hardware turns off. When the hardware turns off, it disintegrates. But God knows how to turn on the computer. And God has a backup of everything in the computer. <coughs> so God can restore the character when he, I don't know, gives us new hardware. So it's okay to die in the Lord, like all the prophets and uh, martyrs. What is not okay is to die unnecessarily the second death, because we did not believe or uh, repent. And then there is 1,000 years end of sin. Those who repent, they are with God, and those who don't repent, they are dead here with Satan waiting for 1,000 years. And uh, those who are saved and who repented, they are reviewing the CCTV of Earth since creation. Imagine God has CCTV. There is camera in heaven. We can see everything. So 1,000 years we will watch CCTV. Imagine. 1,000 years you are watching everybody's CCTV on earth. <clears throat> so that it will be clear that God is love, that he gave everybody chance, that sin really causes death. And then there will be new earth. <clears throat> After 7,000 years, the, ch the, the earth will be uh, put back to original without sin. And it will be reset, reinstall. God will reinstall the original uh, installer of the whole earth. But we already trained, we already experienced sin, so we don't like to sin anymore. Then everything, animate and inanimate, will declare that God is love. <clears throat> okay, now let me teach you JavaScript. <clears throat> JavaScript is very easy. <laughs> I told you PHP is also... PHP is one of the easiest language I've ever tried. That's why I, I, I told you I programmed hundreds of thousands of lines in C and C++ before I found out about PHP. Now I don't make very long programs anymore. I just make very many small programs because they run faster. <clears throat> By the way, the smaller your PHP, the faster it runs. One time, I was making, because I am from Pascal, I studied Pascal when I was college, and I found out there are many people who make libraries. And I made my own libraries, the collection of functions. But I found out in PHP, it's better not to have many, many functions. You know why? The longer your PHP, the more the web server time spends time to parse. Because PHP is an uh, interpreted language, it's not compiled. <clears throat> so in my analysis, it's nice to have big libraries if your language is compiled. Because the compiler will remove things unnecessarily and will uh, link it dynamically. But for, co for interpreted language, it's better to have many sh to, di di Antagen. to divide the program into many small programs. <clears throat> okay, anyway, that's PHP. It runs in the back end, connects to the database. Now we have JavaScript. JavaScript <clears throat> runs on the front end. So in, if we only know PHP, the only interaction we have is submitting forms and clicking links, diba? But with JavaScript, we can do so much more in PHP, uh, in the browser. In fact, like the browser becomes the operating system. So how does uh, JavaScript look like? It is embedded in HTML, like this. Of course, you know how you know it already. Since something like this. So in in uh, HTML, if you just put script, 
everything between script and slash script is JavaScript. And our computer is slow. Like that. So there is a script here so that declares a variable, user ID. In JavaScript, there is no, it's like PHP, the types are uh, dynamic. Var username strings are the same in Java. Since you are from Java, I don't have to explain uh, single quotes and double quotes and strings and semicolon. But in in Java, you put the object and then you put the identifier and you declare variables, right? In page in PHP, you can just use, but all the variables have dollar, diba diba. In JavaScript, there is no dollar in the variable. You just put identifiers that are not included in the if, else, etc. <clears throat> so this is, of course, uh, CSS, as you know. So you mix, you can put CSS, JavaScript, and HTML all in one. Now I will show you more JavaScript. So if you look at this page class, <clears throat> this is a checklist. This is my most complicated JavaScript for forevermore. <laughs> Ever that I've tried. So I was not taking seriously JavaScript until I made this one. The reason I used JavaScript for this is because I want to learn JavaScript. Number two, I, it's a lot of processing and I don't want the server to be slow. So what I did, I let the browser do the work, most of the work. <clears throat> Why? Because, <laughs> so that the server doesn't have to do all the work. So as you see this here class, there is a list of things I need to take to finish computer science here. See, these are the subjects. <clears throat> and there is a list of grades that I took here. But this is not complete. See, my grades are not very good. See my C, B, B plus. But all my, most of my major subjects are A and A. Minus. Anyway, see, programming, computer programming is B minus. <laughs> you know why I made computer programming for is B minus? Because I decided I will never use uh, pirated software. But in our class, we were using Borland for Borland C++ 4. <clears throat> so I said, I will not use that one. I will fail. I will never use pirated software again. I already use a lot. <laughs> I will not add anymore. I remove all my pirated software from my computer. I'm like Daniel. If I perish, uh, Esther, if I perish, I perish. So I did all my projects <clears throat> in Java instead, without any teacher. So I learned Java, I learned the, uh, and I have a low grade because my teacher doesn't know Java. <laughs> he just gave me a passing grade, which I don't uh, really, it doesn't matter to me, as long as I don't use pirated software. <clears throat> Yeah, so my grades are not here because I only started in 2000 after I graduated. So <laughs> I graduated in 2000. Okay, so we have a list of grades. We have a list of checklists. <clears throat> Diba? Yeah. What happens is, suppose, supposedly, uh, computer program. When it's yellow class, that means it's exactly how do I find out? For example, programming languages. Okay, this this one, SPL. This is credited to programming languages, structured of programming languages. <clears throat> so if the subject is the same, pre elective. Uh, what free elective? Literary research, computer organization, 
this is computer architecture. So MIM is credited microprocessor, IO and memory management, memory system is credited to computer organization and assembly. <clears throat> so if you're not, if I will reload this class, you will see that there is a, a no, progress chart. See, look at this one. This one. It is doing all the logic of comparing and putting the grids here. <clears throat> so instead of the server doing it, so this is how it looks like. We have two tables. We have two tables class. Main, mainly we have the we have the curriculum checklist and then we have the grades and there's another table the substitutions because for example microprocessor is substituted with a computer organization the class <clears throat> and there is also special substitution for the person only so class the JavaScript looks like this. And I want to show you my JavaScript. Uh -huh. The more you see, the more you learn. Okay. Where is our JavaScript? We we'll just type script. And we are supposed to find it. Okay, this is our JavaScript now. <clears throat> it's too small still. Let's make it bigger. This is how you make a function in uh, JavaScript. You put function and then the function name and then the arguments and then uh, the function uh, code block. How you declare variables? You, you can say bar and then the name of the variable. You can assign on instantiate, initial, yeah. <clears throat> window that location changes the URL. When it changes the URL, the browser loads something else. So if you want your JavaScript to change uh, the URL in the browser, you just say window location assign, and then it will uh, redirect. Now let's look for another script. This is the main script. <coughs> you can uh, run functions in JavaScript by on click for example you click a button something will run so there's many events on click on click on and on uh, over and so on which can run javascript apps uh, functions as you see here class i i have uh, i am determining the term this is coming from php <coughs> PHP can generate JavaScript uh, code because PHP can generate HTML code, right? Diba, diba? PHP can generate HTML. Therefore, PHP can also generate JavaScript. So how, how do you pass variables from, Jav, from, uh, from PHP to JavaScript? Just echo, echo, echo. So I'm echoing this one from PHP. This one also from PHP, and this all the data I'm echoing from PHP. <clears throat> this is how you use if. It's the same with Java and C and everything else. So I'm, I have many functions here. and But in JavaScript, you can declare the value as a function. <laughs> For example, this one. X, HTTP3 on stage state change <clears throat> what will happen when this happens when this event happens this function will run so there's a function without a name and this are this is the contents of the function <clears throat> so
So this is for, for sending checklist to student to the back end. So there's another PHP named send checklist to student where when I click something or drag something, it will tell uh, something to the back end from curriculum, etc., and send it. So you have a page that is loaded and you can, uh, without reloading the page, you can call <coughs> another PHP from the back end and get the data from that PHP and use it on top. That's how most web apps work now, like uh, YouTube, uh, Facebook, they, they don't reload the whole thing, rarely. They, don't, they rarely reload. <clears throat> what else? How do you have windows that appear and disappear on your page? There is, you just change the visibility like this. So there, there's a div that is fixed uh, location. And if you make it visible, then it shows. If you make it in the uh, visibility, if you change the visibility, then it hides. Diba? <clears throat> of course, we just copied that from something somewhere else. Now, for the logic class, <clears throat> the evaluate curriculum function here. Uh, as you notice here, I have many commented. Uh, commented lines. <clears throat> this is supposed to get the element by ID. So in, in XML, the you put uh, input, uh, name, and then ID, and then value, right? So if you want to get a handle <clears throat> of an object in XML, you can say get element by ID document that get element by id and then the name of the element however i found out <clears throat> even if i don't do it it still works <laughs> by default uh, the element is there already so i just commented it i just uh, try to reduce the code console log is for debugging if you want to see something what happened Use console log, and then it will come out of the, of the console like this. <clears throat> it will, whatever you log in the console will show here in the developer console. Now, this is how you access a table. How do you know how long the table is? Checklist, table, rows, that rows, that length. It will show will tell you how long, how many rows. <coughs> and then how many, uh, no, not how many. How do you access uh, data inside the table? This one. Checklist table rows R. R because there is uh, many rows. So the first row will be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And cells, the TD, there are many TDs, right? 0, 1, 2, 3. That's the field number. <clears throat> and inside the TD, there's HTML. So if you want to access the HTML, like this. If you want to access the text, you use uh, plain text, I think it was. <clears throat> so if I can access all the rows and all the cells, then I can compare if there is, if the checklist is uh, taken already. And that is the comparison here, class. I'm just accessing and copying. How do you assign? How do you assign something? Let's see. This one, class. This one, I'm copying from one table to another. You see? I'm copying the grade <coughs> to the checklist. See this line I highlighted? I'm copying one grade from this table to the other table. So you have idea how to read and write from another table. And how to change color, you can just set attribute. The row, change, change the color, the CSS of the row. 
just table set attribute bg color light green. This is not CSS, it's just HTML. <clears throat> Logic is the same like in Java. You can use not. For loop is the same like in PHP. What else? Of course, your comparison is the same, greater or equal. And you can set attributes and so on. It's very easy, right? See? But the the thing I'm trying to do is very hard. Actually, it looks very. It's just it's just a set set operation. But I'm just excited to show you this because it's uh, there's a lot of things going on here. Okay, that's just the logic and loops, and it's just uh, set set operations. What else do I do here? Reset checklist. Okay. You can attach uh, event uh, event functions. Event listeners. And I have a drag and drop here class. I will show you. This is one of the most complicated things. The drag and drop. I'll show you class. For example, this one, I'm going to remove this. Oh, I cannot remove it. Computer programming tool. The key C means, uh, for example, this one is green. Okay. This one, I'm going to deactivate this. Okay. So, uh, computer, uh, where, I, where, where, where did it go? <coughs> computer organization and assembly. I'm going to credit microprocessor, I.O. and memory systems to a computer organization and assembly. Look what I'm going to do. It's drag and drop. So I'm going to drag this one here and then release it here. And what happened? Nothing happened. I think we're supposed to drag the... Oh, what happened, my friends? Oh, this one. We're supposed to drag this one here. So it says much automatically for this curriculum? Yes. So now my MIM is credited to computer organization in assembly. By I just drag. So your department chair is dragging like this. And if I said it's for everyone, then everybody else gets that credit. I mean all the all the MIM in the whole BSCS curriculum can be credited to computer organization, right? <clears throat> so that's why the department chairs like this, because they don't have to credit everyone. They just say, this, this course is equivalent to this, by just dragging. If, if they make a mistake, they can just click it and just de uh, deactivate. But it's, I log, I log everything that happens because <laughs> If they want to blame me, I will say, you know, you're the one who did this one. So everything that I see, drag, especially those that are decision, decision basis for their decisions, I log them and who did it and when, so they can remember their mistakes. <clears throat> so uh, it's convenient for them because it automates. And then class, when they click view mode, you see this one, right? They send this to you, right? I saw Chiron uh, looking at this. So this is also, uh, I just did it with this with JavaScript. It's just a window that is hiding. If you ignore passing grade, this is what happens. So all those logic you can also have transfer of credits and substitution of credits. 
I color things that are green and so on. And I still have. Recently, I put how many percent done in the uh, curriculum. So let's go back to JavaScript. So that's the only thing. Uh, actually, JavaScript is just the same. We also have switch case. <clears throat> Do you have switch case in uh, Java? But here, you can switch case on text. In PHP, I was amazed you can switch case strings. Because <laughs> in C, you can only switch case ordinal values, numbers only. In PHP, you can switch case strings. I think also in JavaScript, you can switch case uh, strings. What operation is this class? Do you know this operation? What operator is this? Let's, can anybody guess? Or do you know what this operator is? You just tell me quickly no if you don't know. You don't know? It, it is the same as S, uh, S plus, no, this is append. This is a string, right? This is a string. It appends center to the string S. So S has value. If you say S plus equals, it will add center at the end. It's append. This is in JavaScript in strings this is plus means append i think in php append is uh, that so in javascript it is plus for strings okay what else this one is comparison <laughs> sometimes we forget this is one of the most common errors class if you only put one equals this is always true Diba? Here? If, like this. If you forget to put the other equal, only one, it's always true. You know why? You know why? Because it's an assignment. If you only put one equals in the if, <laughs> grades units becomes blank, right? In this one, it becomes blank. And because the assignment is successful, it is true. So if you, if you forget the other equals, but if you put do, dual double equal, it is comparison. <clears throat> Yan, ano pa? I think there is nothing special. If you are from another programming language, JavaScript is almost very easy. It's very easy. Just different. Appending is different. It's plus in uh, PHP. It is that ano pa? and function means in php we also use the name function in javascript also function okay okay the advantage of using javascript again i will just say is that you load the logic is not done in the server side because imagine if 3000 students evaluate their own curriculum then the server will has to compare everything and you will all time out but if i just let the browsers do it <laughs> the job is divided among all the computers that you are using instead of uh, spending server time but I low I dump all your grades, which is no problem. It's easier to dump the grades than to dump the grades and go to comparisons. Okay, that is what I can say about JavaScript. <clears throat> and if you program in JavaScript, like uh, like the API, I was I was I gave you an API assignment, right? You can access other web services, like you can access 
Moodle, <coughs> you can access Google, you can access Facebook, <coughs> and other things. And you can send data to them, etc. You can access OpenAI. Yeah. <coughs> Do you have any question? <clears throat> or you are busy? It's okay. There are many JavaScript tutorials, but uh, we for the language, if you are fr coming from a different programming language, no need to read all the tutorials up to it. Before, JavaScript was unstable and unpredictable because every browser have their own implementation of JavaScript. So some JavaScript doesn't work in <coughs> Chrome, some doesn't work in Internet Explorer, some doesn't work in Mozilla, in Netscape. So it was confusing. But now they are all standardizing and all JavaScript, most things you do will run in any browser. You imagine class, you have web users. You can run code on their computer. That's what you can do with JavaScript. <laughs> you can use the computer of your people who use your service. How? You put your JavaScript. By using JavaScript, you can run things in the computer of your users. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> Instead of running things in the server, you can run things in their computer. Although you have a memory limit, I found out in Chrome, the memory limit is 4 gigabytes. After 4 gigabytes, uh, things uh, crash. In Facebook, if you leave it running and you have not enough memory, Facebook will complain out of memory. So that is uh, introduction to JavaScript. I'll find something between JavaScript so that we can exercise. It's time already, class. Let's break. Father and Aaron, thank you for the opportunity to learn uh, JavaScript and the fundamental beliefs. This uh, lead us and guide us what to do and how to learn to practice our the talents and interests that you have given us. Thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.